Today we're going to do a picture by Paul Brennan from Pixabay of a camel. And I've got a 5x7 piece of Yupo paper and a copy of my picture. And I've used my pencil and some carbon paper to trace the camel. And so we've traced it. And now I'm going to mask the camel. And in the picture it has some kind of a mark right here that's not normally on a camel so I'm going to leave it out of my picture and not even worry about tracing that. I've taken my PBO drawing gum. You can use regular masking fluid. Sometimes I use the Dale Rowney masking fluid. I poured it into cup to make sure it was all thin and not any lumps in it. And I've taken it and put it a little bit like a half an inch around my camel. I'm gonna have to go down the rest of the way. Okay, I have here. some monsoon, some cloudy blue, and some blending solution and a Swiffer. And I'm gonna want it darker at the top. And down here. I don't want it running. into the camel. You can do whatever colors you want to. That's not very bright. But the camel's the main. Actually, I actually think I want it a little bit lighter than that. Let some run off and get those hard spots to make it smooth. Okay, I've removed the masking fluid from around it and cleaned up some of the areas where I, with rubbing alcohol, that I had done that have like right in there and right here I got some blue just wipe that off a little bit and now I'm remasking his harness because I'm gonna have it a different color put some sandal latte ginger and sienna in there and it's beaded up on the edges and as I look at my reference photo I'm seeing the lightest areas are like around here, here, here. So those would be the latte. The ones that are more orangish will be up here, which will be the sienna up there. I'll put some teak wood down here in a little while after a bit and then in between colors, different areas. So I'm gonna just start by putting a base of color on. And I'm observing my picture and I know up here there's a very light colored stripe here. And it's light in through here. Top of his eyebrow is a lighter color in front of his harness. So we're just putting on a base coat of colors. Anything that I see is the lightest light in my picture. There's some very light lights on here. I don't want to go out too far. And go into the blue. Okay. Might be a few real lights down here. These will be the mid-tones
Okay, this is Sienna. I see something. So here's a darker color. Ginger. And some latte. I don't want to lose that. Definitely darker down here. Taking my brush, I have left some of that. I'm going to lighten some of these areas and blend them together. I'm going to observe my picture while I'm doing that. Okay, we have a very dark spot right along here. Rinse my brush, wipe it on a paper towel. So I'm working damp. I try to blend some of this. Okay, what we're doing is looking at the direction of the fur curve around here. Okay, there is a darker down here. See how the ink's just reactivating. Okay, I'm going into some teak wood because right along here it's a darker section. Making it kind of look like fur sticking there. Okay, first we should go this way, down here. Got my brush damp because it was too dry. Wiped it on a paper towel. Going into some ginger here, just observing the colors on the camera. You can see there's like a shadow under here, so that's what the ginger color. To the latte.
is dabbing the direction of the fur. Pick up a little bit of some of these darker colors. Mid tones. Just kind of like tickling my brush across some of these areas. Around this cam also for now. I'm just gonna put teak wood here. I think I'm gonna need some black. If the eyelashes go up there, I'm not gonna put them in right now. I'm gonna do that with a pen afterwards. Going into the sienna because it's nice and okay. I filled my palette back up with some color. to move my iPad so that you could see it into the picture. So I'm just putting on the base coat in this little area right in here that is really dark. Most of that's just going to be teak wood. And I might have to even go darker than the teak wood. Taking some sienna and making it, giving it some brush strokes. And got some shadow. Take wood up here. Trying to make it look like fur. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to have to go darker there. Okay, the front of him right here, it's all dark underneath here, so I'm going to all this teak wood. Bring it all in. Okay, you might have a little bit of the sienna orange. If I noticed, it seems like most of the sienna color was on that side of him. Hmm. Just up and down the fur direction. Into the ginger. Seems like it's dark. I have those first strokes along there. And go to the latte along here. I 
to me it looks like it's going to need some lift. Basically I'm just trying to get a base on and then I'll work later on on adding more details, lifting out, putting in some spots. Okay, I'd say this is sienna in here, but not as thick of sienna or dark. So thin it down a little bit. It almost seems a little bit yellow here where the light's shining on it. So I'm gonna take some butterscotch. Mix it in with some of that latte that I already have on there. Fill up some color. Try ginger right here where it's darker. Okay, it is real dark, so we're gonna take teak wood. I'm gonna go underneath here. Bet this thing goes into some sienna. And then into some ginger. You can put a little bit of sienna down here. A little lot, just some. Just observe the colors that you see and get it on and blend it together. See how once you get a base, you can just blend the colors and they blend together nicely if you get your brush damp and wipe it on a paper towel. And if you get a hard line, you can just kind of try to lift it off or use it as part of the fur, the hard lines. This seems to be like real dark, right down, through there, but I'm going to soften it off, it's not as dark. Picking up more teak wood. Mm -hmm. 
it's that yellow color again. Back in a little bit of sienna. It's kind of mixing colors right on the page. Gonna put some ginger down here. And I'm blending again. Could also make your camel silly colors if you want to. Colors really don't make a difference. The tonal values is what's important. I kind of like that. And I think that I have that color here. He's got eyelashes here. I'm just going to paint this area. So later on I'll negatively go around that. Okay. This is Latte. Going back into the teak wood. Underneath you have his lip that's got to be super dark. But yet, it's not even. There's hairs going up, coming down over top of it. Dark right here. Put that color dark back in later. Okay, we have like an orangey color, so I'm gonna take some sienna and some butterscotch. Underneath here, ginger. Might not be dark enough, so let's go for teak wood. Latte. That blue color. I'm going to put some in up here. <laughs> this is some thicker the blue color. The blue color was monsoon plus latte. So have a, even though I left that one thing out, there's still like a mole or something, or a nostril. Something right there. Just put a little speck there to the teak. Black plus teak wood. For your darkest dark. Gonna go under here. Okay, and here it should be dark. I think it shouldn't be 
teak wood a little bit more, not necessarily so much black. And they're placing it's really dark. And in front of his eye. Across the top here. Lost everything. Stop right there. Just teak wood. To pull it out some. And some sienna. Because it definitely needed to be darker. Another place it needs to be darker. I've switched to some markers. This is a pack of uh, Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers. The tips are smaller, slightly smaller than the regular Spectrum Noir markers. Hold on a minute. Slightly smaller. You can use either one. So I'm pulling some of this darker color. Just uh, it's the ivory color, which you can barely see. But since it's a very light color, I can drag it down to lift. See, this tip was a bigger tip than this side. Pretty much lifting, wiping it on a paper towel to get these whiskers. Okay, and I can do the same thing. Down through here. It's got a lot on the tip, just rubbing it off on a paper towel, just scratching it. Okay. Do the same thing. So just look at the direction that the fur is going. I also have a natural brown in here. I'm going to use the bigger size.
so the UFO paper will lift some. I'm picking up some of this, these dorks, and breaking it up a little bit. I think I'd like some more ginger color. So I just pick up my paintbrush. And add some more of that color down through here. And I can don't have to add it solid. I can put little stripes and then I can take make it look like fur and break it up a little bit to give it some texture. And I can see that there's some orange down here so I'm going into the sienna color again. down here. This is teak wood. Some of this ink's reactivating. Just kind of blending the color on the paper. Kind of matches sienna, so you could use the sienna paintbrush. Give that some character. To me, when I look at it, it just shows dark. But I guess right here. On a solid line. What I want. To pull out where some of the wet stuff of his eye should be. But it doesn't supposed to be that thick. Tell you that. Let's go back over. Okay. And then we have eyelashes. If you think that you lost too many of the eyelashes, actually, here we got all this.
There's a whole bunch of hairs here. Make sure you're finished with this area before you go using your Faber Castell marker on it. We have the gel pen. If you feel like you've lost too many. Medium sepia pen. Where I can. Before I do that too much, I still think it needs to be like a this ginger color. Maybe I'll add some ginger to the blue. Right in through there. Maybe some down here. Okay, down here, the harness is kind of making a shadow right there, I think. Kind of blend it together. Okay, this switches to a different direction here. Just up this way. Hair's changing directions a lot right in through here, actually. So. If you press harder, you can lift more out. And it's weird because it goes this way and then this way. And here it just starts to go that way. Okay. Take a break. Seems like you have whiskers radiating out from there. Some longer hairs down here. Just how much detail you want in there and how much you don't. How cartoonish you want it to look. Okay, I see down here.
There's a lot of whiskers. He's a very whiskery camel. Down here there's some whiskers. Up here there's whiskers. But some white gel pen across here too. Across there. Okay. Down here, I'm gonna put some of his whiskers because there was quite a bit. So, in front of this. some whiskers. It probably needs to overlap the get it done. Okay. And now I can decide what color I think that I would want to do. Is halter, and I think that I want to do it a bright blue, so I'm gonna try glacier, gotcha. glacier in my palette, and because I want some darker, I'm gonna actually mix it with some of the black that I have remainder in my palette. So we're in a different spot. Blacks mixed with that. Okay. It's so lighter as we go here, so I'm just going to pull it out. Make it lighter. Again, go a lot darker on this side. And then drag it out. The end, end of the rope there. Okay. And it is blue. Butterscotch and latte. It was one of the colors that was already in my palette there. And I could do that with a black pen. Okay, I've got a blue micron pen. to give this a little bit of texture. And these lines would be going this direction. 
Like I said, most of it's hit and miss. Here at the bottom, I need it darker right in through here. can actually see the stitching going in this direction. in the corner. You can stand back and observe to see whether you think you're done, if you want to do any more to it or not. Don't overdo it. See a few other things, a few other touch ups that I do, but then I think I'll just leave it. So there's Camel.